All right, discussing axles and capacities on these trailer projects, teardrop trailer projects, all that kind of stuff. This particular one is the fifth one that I've built. I'm obviously using experience from four other builds. Uh, there was a couple others that were uh, more deluxe than this, obviously. This one's remaining a bit skeletonized in order to save weight. I also went with weld only build on this, only using the bolts at pivot points like uh, uh, right there and on the, uh, the mounts. I'm, I'm trying to save weight. Now the axles that the Chinese people at the Guangzhou trailer factory use and then Harbor Freight imports those, a few other companies import those too, this is what they call their heavy duty trailer. This is like their super duty one. It's one they call 1750 pound capacity. Now that's not really a metric translation. What that is is it's 250 pounds of trailer on a one ton axle. Is, is what you end up with okay it's about 250 pounds of trailer on a one ton axle these are DOT US rated US parts compatible axle kits that they include with these trailers um, you can order those axle kits off amazon.com you can get them from uh, Northern Tool and Hydraulics but you're not going to get them cheaper than buying them in Oregon with a 20% off coupon and walking into the store and buying it in Oregon with a 20% off coupon. Um, that usually by the time you work the sale prices and 20% off coupon you're getting this kit for $300. If you want to buy that axle alone at the cheapest places I found like in Washington State you pay hundred bucks for the axle then you're buying the springs then you're buying the tires um, basically by the time you buy the light kit the axle kit and the hitch kit you're you're pretty close to that 300 bucks again and and then you're having to measure and cut everything and get your steel so the Chinese are hard afraid if you can go to a store and you're not paying shipping that's the cheapest you're gonna get these and I'm trying to argue with some people online and it's like trying to explain common sense to an idiot um, you're not going to get cheaper than buying these storefront in Oregon with a coupon. Now, when somebody's talking about building teardrop trailers, and that Harbor Freight has other 4 foot by 8 foot trailers, like the folding trailers that they sell for about 100 bucks less, those are an 1150, they're a half ton rated axle. Now, whenever you're talking about these, these campers and off-road and off-grid type stuff, you have to take whatever the listed capacity is for any of that stuff and cut it in half because when it's off-road you're talking bouncing and stressing now even if you're not going off-road and you're really going to use these things for real and you're going to load them you know you have curbs potholes and speed bumps in the middle of the city and what will happen is you can get away with short distances, flat ground. I've loaded a ton and a half on some of these things before. When I had a reinforced frame on a trailer, I was going a short distance on flat level ground on good pavement. You, you can get away with that um, under those types of circumstances. You can get away with loading three quarter ton on one of those little four lug wheel trailers the, the issue is that when you're building a camper that goes off-road, all your capacities go in half. So, let's say the camper housing and everything weighs three or 400 pounds. And you weigh, you know, some something, and then you're going to be putting weight in there. Now, obviously, you're not riding in a trailer off-road, but when you got a couple of people crawling in there and hanging out in there or, or bouncing around having sex in there or something like that, then you've, you've got another situation with the capacity on the springs in a frame. And, but it, it really boils down to like the bearings and the axle and that sort of stuff. So this is a one ton rated axle. If I'm talking about off road, it's a half ton situation. Now if I'm looking at like this thing here is built a little heavy. I use cheaper components where this this isn't really a, a travel around and live aboard structure okay this is something where you park it you unhook it you leave it and it's a storage storage shed or a modular part of a building when you're building a teardrop trailer you, you want to build them strong but you, you know you're, you're always trying to find this this balance point between strength and weight 
and when you start loading that with stuff and you're talking about maybe three four hundred pounds of the actual trailer structure itself and then you're talking about loading stuff and then you're talking about somebody who's going to be in there you're you're way over capacity for those tiny little donut tires um, this is really the minimum you want to go on something like that and realistically when people are building those teardrop trailers to sell them um, and to really do expedition stuff with them they're really wanting to step up to the next axle bigger which is the 3500 pound axle uh, no the axle doesn't weigh 3500 pounds but it's the RV industry standard of um, uh, an axle with 3500 pounds of capacity they assume that even if it's a really basic flatbed trailer that you're going to take that 3500 pound axle you're going to have about 500 pounds of trailer on there that's just your frame and and your hitch and all that kind of stuff and then you've got a ton and a half of capacity on that that you can work with and when you go to the conventions and you see people professionally building the teardrop trailers that's what they use okay the other thing that you'll see some people using is they'll take two of these axles and have a two axle trailer. Now the advantage of those is that when you unhook a vehicle they're a lot more stable and they're a lot easier to level. A lot of people would also say that when you're going down the road they're more stable and easier to level when you have a twin axle trailer. The issue with that is that in some states as soon as you have a twin axle trailer it must legally also have trailer brakes and the tow vehicle must legally be able to handle trailer brakes well that eliminates nearly all of your four-cylinder pickup trucks um, these little one-ton axles don't have any any way of putting brakes on them they don't they don't come that way you, you have to go to the 3500 pound axles and usually a way that's going to go is one of the axles will have brakes on it the other does not it's just the bare minimum to meet the legal standard if if somebody's doing a more deluxe trailer they'll put the brakes on both axles but that's getting above the size of a teardrop now if you do something like this slightly larger and have a twin axle set up one of the things people like about those is um, you, you can set them up to where they're, they'll pretty easily hold level when they're not um, hooked up to a vehicle. Now you still want the tongue to run a little bit heavy when it's, when it's hooked up so it doesn't fishtail and get weird on you down the road. But they're also, when you have double axles, they're less likely to rock when there's a weight shift. Uh, this, because it's kind of tall, the, the more top heavy a trailer is, you don't just have to worry about it flipping over sideways you have to worry about it rocking when you go over bumps because it's going to rock on that pivot point okay it's going to rock on that pivot point when it rocks on that pivot point it lifts up on the trailer tongue which in turn will lift up on the axle of the towing vehicle and can cause the tow vehicle not just a fishtail but to lose traction and slide off a mountain that's one of the reasons that for off-road campers and teardrop trailers that are off-road stuff, um, a lot of people might go with a double axle and they keep the entire center of gravity on that thing low. Okay, they want it to be low. You don't want it to be very tall. When we built the Ansar Palace, the original plan was for that thing to be only about four foot tall. But then we got to talking and we decided, you know, he's really not going to be going off-road. His pickup truck was a two-wheel drive anyway. Um, if he does go off-road, he's going to be slow and careful. He's not doing a bunch of real crazy, hey, y'all watch this type stuff. Um, but, but we also were looking at a lot of other designs. And that's, that's why you don't go seven or eight feet tall on the off-road ones. Uh, without doing something to have a lot wider footprint or double axles again to have a, a broader uh, stability on the bottom of that trailer so not just to prevent you from s slipping sideways but to prevent it from rocking which would cause that trailer tongue to rise up 